The Athletics' 4th of July weekend started with a bang as they eked out a one-run victory. The late-inning fireworks continued Friday night as the A's slipped past Kansas City in dramatic fashion. But yesterday, Kansas City returned to favor with a royal bash of their own. Today, we wrap up the holiday weekend A-style. On a day we honor Catfish, one of the Athletics' greatest, who unfortunately got away to the Yankees. We welcome a Yankee pitcher to Oakland. Ted Lilly will be available out of the bullpen today, but he will pitch as a starter in the second half of the year. But today, we say so long to the first half. The A's in the finale of the four-game series with the KC Royals. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to A's Baseball here on Fox Sports Net with Ray Fossey. I'm Greg Pop, and the A's go for the big 5-0 today, Foss, their 50th victory of the first half. It has been an up-and-down first half, but you can feel the A's surging to the break, and now they get a new left-handed pitcher. You know, I think they're much better off than they were this time last year because it took the All-Star break before they got to 500, but look what they've done. The first games, they were 20 and 26 since then. They are 29 and 12. They're picking up the run support. The ERA is much better. Pitching is better. This past week, they've not scored a lot of runs, but they are playing much better, and again, much better than they were this this time last year. And we'll talk about Ted Lilly throughout the afternoon with the addition of Lilly. The A's now have three left-handers in the rotation. <laughs> Mulder and today's starter Barry Zito. The All-Star makes his final start before he goes to Milwaukee. He's a 10-game winner. He'll be up against Paul Bird, an 11-game winner who was not an All-Star this year. On Sunday afternoon, get here early. One of the great moments is watching the youngsters take the field with the A starters, and a few brought uh, the Barry Zito T-shirts. Could you please sign? <laughs> the Zaniacs are out. They gave away 10,000 uh, T-shirts yesterday, Foss, and what a moment for those little guys to go running out there for the national anthem with the major leaguers like Barry Zito. And you know, you don't never, you never know what might happen in this young man's life. One of these kids, when one day they can say, "Man, I went out on the field." And that really inspired me to want to be a Major League Baseball player. Just getting down there and actually getting down there, we get a chance to go down there and batting practice to look up. Oh, yeah. You know, people come to ball game, they look down, and they never know the enormity of this, uh, this stadium, especially with the people in it. But uh, Barry Zito knows, as he has been out there and once again doing very well. And his mom and dad are here to watch him pitch, and they're going to fly with Barry to Milwaukee for his big night Tuesday night as he will be pitching today against fellow All-Star Mike Sweeney at last back in Tony Pena's lineup today after missing the first three games of the series. He's been reasonably hot the last two and a half weeks, and he does lead the American League in hitting with a 362. So Mike Sweeney back in the middle of the order against Barry Zito today, Foss. And the McDonald's got a report, the two and four seam fastball curve, outstanding changeup, the curve, Composure, the last 31 starts, 21 and 4, 2.58 ERA. Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, Barry Zito against Paul Bird, a very intriguing matchup of double figure winners as we close out the first half of the year. A's outer defense will feature Eric Burns in left today for a second straight start. Only his fourth start of the year in left, but now two in a row for Adam Pyatt in left field. Terrence Long in center, John Mabry in right. Jermaine died not in the lineup today. David Justice is DHing. Olmedo Signs will make the start at first base with Ramon Hernandez catching Barry Zito. Will there be another one-run game? An incredible run going back to the Catfish Hunter era. The Ray Fossey era. We're going back to the early 70s. The A's have now played six consecutive one-run games. Fossey, are we going to play a seven today? Uh, I don't know, but let's uh, see that the A's in the first half on a strong note. They'd like to get win number 50 today. They're staying, they sit at 49 after uh, not able to pick up the victory yesterday. And Paul Burt has been outstanding. He's been a great right-handed pitcher and one of the bright spots for the Kansas City Royals. <laughs> And like they, a little more offense. They have not scored a lot of runs in this six-game stretch in which they have had one-run games. Of course, uh, leaving interleague play, maybe that affected them getting back in the American League, but they have not scored a lot of runs. Would like to do it a little bit earlier. Yeah, just 19 runs during this uh, six-game stretch. Been a tight week around here, but at the last game before the All-Star break. Hope you enjoy it today. Beautiful day in Oakland as Carlos Fables takes strike one. It is uh, no balls and one strike on uh, Carlos. Had a good series since returning out of their lineup here on that Thursday night, July the 4th. Banged out a couple of hits right away in the first game. He had two more on Friday night, and he was one for four yesterday afternoon. Ted Lilly hanging out with his uh, 
starting fails, although Ted Lilly is available to pitch out of the bullpen today. There's a strike, and Perry gets ahead of Fabulous one ball and two strikes. Corey Lytle hanging out with Lilly. And a lot of speculation about where Lilly will go, Ray. And Art House said before the game that Corey Lytle, when the A's begin the second half of the year in Baltimore, Corey Lytle will pitch the fourth game of the second half. Ted Lilly will pitch the fifth game, the first game of the A's go to St. Petersburg to take on the Devil Rays. And Aaron Harang now is going to move into long relief out of the bullpen. Mike Fury is no longer with the club now. And this at bat for Carlos Fabulous no longer active. He strikes out as Zito gets number one early. Well, the good news for Barry Zito, Dan Harrison, the uh, home plate umpire, is calling a high strike. When you look at Barry's numbers, 10 and 3 on a season, his 19th start. But the fastball inside corner struck him out. But the first pitch that he called a strike looked like it was a little bit up in the zone that he got the strike. And for Barry, 99 Ks. Now he's got 100. 100. That's, That's 100. a big one. That's number 100 for Barry. Barry is the A's first all-star left-hander since uh, the great Vita Blue in 1975. And uh, last year, Barry Zito had a tremendous strikeout year, as you recall, over 200 strikeouts. He had 205 a year ago. This one is lifted to Mark Ellis and Shallow Roddy to retire the DH of the Royals, Luis Alisea, for the second half. That will bring on Carlos Beltran. Kind of a mediocre first half for Beltran, but he is a terrific player. And last year, he also had a mediocre first half. Hit the break hitting 263. And then really turned it on in the second half. He had 358 last year in the second half, the third best batting average in the entire American League. Well, one pitch to the center fielder, Beltron. Well, Zito's got the curveball action today. And the count is one ball, one strike. Throw a good change up to Fabulous uh, in the first at bat. So it looks like he's got them all working right out of the bullpen. And that has not been the case for Barry. He has been a little bit of a slow starter throughout the year, and uh, his last two starts have started very slowly for him. Yeah. Well, that's a mighty rip there by Beltron. It's always the fastball seems so much faster because of the change up in curve. That at only 89 miles per hour, but good location on the outside part of the plate. 2-2 pitch. High fastball and Beltron lays off. Zito picked up his 10th victory when he beat the Reds on June the 22nd. He is uh, at a loss and no decision in each of his last two outings. And he strikes out Beltron there. So overpowering top of the first for Barry. Strikeouts number 100 and 101 for the All-Star. Welcome to Planet Zito, Paul Bird. 49 and 38 trying to get their 50th win in the first half. Ellis Long, Tejada, then Justice Chavez, and the hottest hitter on the club right now, John Mabry. He'll be batting at number six and playing at right. Almeida signs Eric Burns and Ramon Hernandez will bat ninth against uh, Paul Bird. And a McDonald scout report fastball, curve, slider, change up, mid 80s fastball. He relies on the control and his command. And look at the wind up, the old fashioned style wind up where he actually winds up. One of those just stand and turn. It's like a retro game. Yeah. Cats are shorter bobbleheads, and this guy's going into the uh, the old time motion. There's Ooh. a strike. A little tough to pick up initially. Is this a getaway day strike zone? I believe so. <laughs> this it's is the ultimate. Uh, the last game of the year is the ultimate getaway day, but this one. They've got airplane tickets to go everywhere, so be swinging today with Dan Iasonia and the clock ticket. And uh, the plate up fire. Now here's the motion that uh, he has gone to. Actually, ready to take a little strain off of his shoulder. He started doing this this year. There's the wind up and the kick. Uh, that's that's neat. That's the way it used to be. He might even go to a double pump every once in a while. Actually, this is pre-catfish. We're going back to the 50s here with this. Ellison check swing. He's had a little bit of a diff difficult time picking it up initially because it's just so unusual. Well, normally when, when a guy would uh, wind up like that, he'd be over the top, but he does drop down side on which makes it a little bit more difficult to pick up. There it is, and then drops down. A whole bunch of stuff going on, but he's good. 
But he does change speeds of fast throw just about anything, anytime. Now we saw your scouting report there. He's also got a screwball, didn't he? That he will throw occasionally to the left-handers. And there's a curveball that Ellis lifts to left field. Raul Abanez glad to be off first base with Mike Sweeney's return. Will make the catch, and Ellis is retired. So Raul Abanez is in left field today. One of the very best, Carlos Beltran, a terrific throwing arm out in center. In fact, only Darren Erstad has more outfield assist from center field this year in the American League than Beltran. Brandon Berger is in right, the infield, Joe Randa, Nafi Perez on the left side, Carlos Fablis, Mike Sweeney is back, and A.J. Hinch is catching. The right-hander who winds and he works. And long, had to slip one of those in. Right? Long fouls it off for a strike. Well, that's the way I used to listen to Harry Carey and, and Jack Buck and uh, when I was growing up. And there's the windup and the kick. You know, I mean, everything was, they went through everything, but now it's, there's the turn. <laughs> well, you do so much radio, you know, it, it, you always wonder why they always describe the windup because it took so long sure. to get through it. That's true. I mean, look at this. I'm set, rocks, and he deals. Long rifles one again, and it goes foul. And Paul Bird jumps ahead. Oh, and two. Paul Bird uh, should be arguably an American League All-Star this year. He has 11 of uh, the Royals' total of uh, 30. What is it? Two, 32 victory. No, 33. They have 33 victories, so he has exactly one third of their victory total. This one is grounded up the middle. Fabless, terrific defender with a backhand, and he will throw out Terrence Long for the second half. One third of the victories. That's incredible. He got off to an eight and two start this year. And we were talking about uh, what Bird was meaning to the Royals along the lines of what Steve Carlton did for the 72 Phillies. As Bird was winning, but the Royals were not. And uh, Tony Muser was fired, and they brought in uh, Tony Penny in mid-May. Remember that year, the R Phillies won just 59 games in total. Carlton won 27 of them. That's 46 percent. Now, you know who the last pitcher was to win a third of his team's total? You should know because you caught him. Yeah. Right? The great Gaylord Perry in 1972 won 24 of the Cleveland Indians total of 72 wins. That's one third. 24 and 16 and 40 starts that year. A wow. Decision every time he went out. Cy Young Award winner. And what a competitor. And how many of those were complete games? Most of Probably them. a lot. Probably yeah. 30 of the 40, huh? Yeah, because uh, the manager would come out say how do you feel he looked the bullpen and said I feel better than he's going to do I will stay <laughs> <laughs> that's a great, well hard to argue that's right and get over stay the hot lifts one to right coming after it is Berger up there a long time but Berger can't get there he goes off the line and it counts a ball and two strikes on Miguel who also is an all-star a very proud day for Miguel he'll be flying to uh, Milwaukee on the plane that he has chartered the Gulfstream 2 Ken Mock is going to Pittsburgh trying to figure out a way to jump on that plane and have it take him to Pittsburgh after dropping the guys off in Milwaukee. Ken's a smooth talker. He may, <laughs> he may be able to work that out. Just take me to Milwaukee and I'll figure it out from there. Well, Art said heck, he could drive the rest of the way. I think Fish said he's going to get there about three to four hours more. Well, a lot early because it more or less red yeah. eyes for the guys uh, leaving out tonight. And Fish could have drive to Madison, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, where he uh, lives. One two pitch burned uh, to Tejada, and Miguel lifts this one of the infield. Bird got a feel away. It'll be caught by Mike Sweeney. Well, welcome back to Mike Sweeney, the All Star. He'll jog in and bat for the first time on this series when we come back. 0 0 after one. First at bat of the series, this four game series for Royal three time All Star Mike Sweeney as he settles in here. It is his right hand, his right ring finger, that he got hit on uh, Wednesday night batting against uh, Joel Pinero. And here it is, Foss. Pinero trying to come up and in a 3-2 pitch. Just don't like to see it. Don't like to hear it. <laughs> Bad enough. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, Sweeney has a couple of stitches in that finger. He can still hit, though. The leading hitter in the American League. He goes the other way with a base hit. Makes it look easy, doesn't it? Yeah, it's something else, isn't it? First at bat since. And he takes a base hit the other way. So smooth. 
Foul off the fastball. Got a curveball and then just kind of rotated on the front foot. No stride. Stayed right on the curveball. Kept his weight back and his bat back. And just an exceptional hitter. We'll update him. He was at 362, and now his uh, base hit here pushes him eight points on top of uh, Ichiro. But the passing of uh, Ted Williams on Friday, everybody's been talking about could somebody hit 400 again. And Mike Sweeney now has the, the highest batting average in baseball as Joe Randa takes a strike. Larry Walker leads the National League boss at 351. I guess George Brett is the guy who. Uh, most recently took a real serious late season run at it. He was hitting uh, as high as 400 as late as September the 19th back in his brilliant year of 1980. Didn't Tony Gwynn or was he during the strike year close to 400? Yes, yes he was during, during the strike year. Todd Helton came close recently. John Olderwood was hitting 400 in uh, August a few years ago. Coming over will make the catch, but Brett really, really serious. As I said, he was hitting 400 on September the 19th that year. He's playing on artificial turf, and, and I think back in the days of George Brett, when there were a lot of fields in the American League that had uh, the artificial turf, that helped, especially ground ball hitters. George was a line drive and ground ball. I mean, he hit everything, but uh, I think there's so so many, so fewer. Artificial surface field. Plus, Mike uh, Swinney's ca case, he can't run. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a good hitter, but he's not having speed. I think it's necessary to get a lot of infield hits and maybe some bun hits. No, I, he even said in the Kansas City papers uh, today, I have no chance to be a 400 hitter. I think he, uh, you and I both agree Ichiro is the one guy yeah. that could possibly challenge both those records. Ted's uh, 406 and 41, and DiMaggio's hitting streak in the same year. is Raul Abanez who's had some big moments on this series. He's also had some regrettable moments in a home run first game of the series on Thursday but eventually uh, lost his team the game a fielding mistake hit another rocket of a home run here on Friday and then yesterday Ray he was involved in that uh, different top of the tenth for the Royals when he was actually uh, called out Interference was called and how he ran down to first base in the tenth, the first out of the inning. One more pitch to the left fielder today after playing at first rolls this one foul and he's down one ball and two strikes. As Greg Myers if he tried to hit Ibanez, he said no because the ball almost rolled foul and he was going to let it roll foul because he had no chance to, to throw him out. He fell at that time so he quickly picked it up, couldn't clear himself and he didn't really believe that Ibanez was that far out of the baseline. But he's happy that the umpire, Mike Winters, jumped on immediately and called him out. And has a big cut, and he strikes out. So Barry Zito has picked up three strikeouts already on the afternoon. Ibani has the second out of the Royals' second. Now Mike Swinney hit this pitch for a base hit, but Ibani is a left-handed hitter, a little bit different. Uh, swing, doesn't really buckle his knees that much. Takes a big swing, and Barry threw a slower variety of the uh, curveball and didn't catch up. Making our third Z. Going to be a lazy, hazy, crazy day. And we may have Joe Zeno dropping by to talk about Nat King Cole later on. Joe uh, Barry's dad is here. And there goes the runner, Sweeney, right away. Hit and run on as Perez lifts one foul. And land for a strike. I just back from injury. It's a finger injury, though. So uh, Tony Pena gives him the green light. He takes off, and Perez on a hit and run fouls one off. Now Perez probably should have taken the pitch. Since when he had such a big jump anyway, two outs get him in scoring position, a chance to drive him in. So he's catch a break with Perez swinging at the pitch. Perez really struggling. He fouls this one back. Now it is 0 and 2. Zito trying to strand fellow All Star Mike Sweeney at first after a leadoff single. What a good guy Mike Sweeney is. Actually, after he was hit by uh, Joel Pinero, uh, Joel kind of dropped his head a little bit in dismay, and uh, Sweeney just said the ball got away from him. Actually, uh, Pinero went to visit Sweeney in the Royal Trainers Room in about the fifth inning just to make sure he was all right, and he thought that was a classy move. I think 
Bob Gibson would do that? No. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I don't believe that's the case. Although Ted Williams liked to mingle a little bit with the opponents, huh? Even talk getting with the other team setters. <laughs> the reason I mention that is I think we all have that visual of Mike Sweeney going after Jeff Weaver last year, but uh, Sweeney is a, a really classy guy, and uh, Weaver just set him off. Weaver, by the way, made his Yankee debut today and got great run support and won. Even though he got blasted, Carlos Delgado with a three-run homer for the new Yankee in the first inning. Vernon Wells later took him out. But Jeff Weaver gets six, gives up six runs today in seven innings, but uh, wins. Didn't quite turn out that way when he was a Tiger. And Derek Jeter had a big home run as a DH for Joe Torre today. Good job. Tony Pena, that's a good play if you're Art Howe and Ken Baca. He's been so aggressive, especially with two strikes and two outs balls. I think that changes Art Howe and Ken Baca's thinking when they play the Royals because of the aggressiveness of Tony Pena and trying to create some offense. They've been struggling at the plate. Sweeney not going, and Perez hits this one hard to left field base set in front of Burns. Nafi Perez turns on one, sends Sweeney down to second base. The Royals have a two-out rally going for Brandon Berger. The aggressiveness on the base pads also will affect the pitcher because if you start paying as much or more attention to the base runners than the hitter, that was a pitch right in the middle of the plate and up. And that is not normally what Barry Zito will try to do. He wants to go down or maybe up higher in the zone. So maybe Sweeney's running might have affected him a little bit. Second base, Sweeney. First base, Navy Perez. Inside fastball just misses to Berger. Berger playing out in left field. Or pardon me, right field this afternoon. Struggling a bit after being uh, recalled from AAA Omaha in early June when uh, Knobloch went on the disabled list. It's under this one. Pops at Eric Chavez. Does he see it? No, no he doesn't. It lands. Fair foul. Foul. Foul ball. Well, Eric didn't say it at all. It may have been a better idea to back away from it in the vicinity and let Zahad or Zito get there. He tried to battle it, but could not make the catch. It does land, but fortunately for Zito and Chavez, foul. Well, Zito said he didn't see it, and I think that's why Zito came over. But you're right. At that point, just get out of the way. Zito's there, and I don't know if he saw it that much. Tejada might have had a better shot at it, although the sun probably was in his eyes as well. You know, we were talking, actually I mentioned it yesterday on radio, about the, the ball coming out of the sun. Sometimes it never does. It stays in, and at that time for Chavez, it never came out of the sun. That's why I couldn't catch it. So a reprieve for Berger. On what pitch. And the concern was the spin on that ball. Is the way it landed, it looked like it was going to possibly roll into fair territory, Ray, but it hit Miguel Tejada, I believe, when he was fired in foul ground. He was standing in foul ground. That ball almost rolled back fair. Because three guys just watched the ball, so evidently they realized it had hit somebody in foul territory. There's a 1-2 to Berger. He swings and stays alive, staying alive. Let's take a look at this from our left field camera behind Chavez. Lance foul. Doesn't touch anybody. Nah. Well, huh? it just came to yeah, I think it was going to stop anyway. But that, you got to pick the ball up. You can't take a chance if nobody oh, touches know. it. Those new sunglasses for Eric Chavez. I haven't seen those before. Berger, big hop to Tejada. Can he flip to second in time? Yes. He gets the force out on Nafi Perez. Oh, brilliant play by Miguel to save. Possibly a run and at least get the A's out of the inning, folks. What a play. Well, Chavez uh, missed it, but Tejada comes up with it. Look at the quick flip. And there is Mark Ellis to be able to handle it. Okay. Now they're all getting their catfish bobblehead doll uh, day, uh, bobblehead uh, dolls today. And the 30th anniversary of uh, Catfish's World Championship for the 72 A's will be going on during the Triumphant Glory Series presented by Viagra. We got an on-field presentation going out at 5:30. The game will start that night, a Saturday night, against the Rangers at 6:05. And the A's are going to wear their throwback unis back to the '72 club, the gold tops, I guess. And the uh, Rangers will wear the look of their forefathers, the Washington Senators. You get your tickets here at the Coliseum, run line at Oakland Athletics. 
Steve I wish Steve Vucinich, the equipment manager, would get the gold pants to go with the gold tops. They look like giant canaries. Because <laughs> we actually wore your gold pants. Yep. Justice flips one to the left and it'll drop in front of Raul Abanez. So David Justice picking it up with the bat on this series. Leads off the second with a base hit. It's a nice sign these people have put up here about catfish. Gentleman, gentleman pitcher. pitcher. Gentleman pitcher, 427. But to us, that would be number one. Class, class individual. One of the best, yeah. without a doubt. Cat won uh, 20 games at least, five straight 21 years from 71 through 75. Aaron Chavez fouls one back. He and Jim Palmer were the best pitchers in the American League that time. And uh, Catfish was always close. He won. Uh, just one Cy Young in 74 when he went 25 and 12 with 23 complete games, but he finished in the top five in the Cy Young balloting four different years. There's a strike. A money pitcher. Talk about a money pitcher. And that's why the A's did so well because Catfish would start game one. And you hear managers talk about wanting to get a pitcher to be able to start game one of an important series, especially postseason. Again. Broke in with the KCAs in 65, pitched his no hitter here in the stadium's first year in 68. And then well, once the uh, decade turned to 1970, he was a terrific pitcher. The thing about Catfish, boss, he retired early. He re retired at age 33. Now, they didn't play quite as long then, but well, still. He was a diabetic. Is that's, that what it was? What Is happened, that why yeah. he, he retired early? Yeah. We uh, battled that throughout his years. Eric Chavez strikes out here, Ray, for the first out of the second. He had a windup pitching every fourth day, and for Catfish, everything was the same. I mean, it was just, it was simply just a matter of winding up and throwing it. I mean, it, it's like he didn't even think about it. He knew exactly what he wanted to do with every pitch in his windup, and it was the same. And he did it every fourth day. But when he went to New York, Billy Martin put him in the five-man rotation. He couldn't. He said, what do I do? But that extra day was just enough to uh, throw him off. And he was thrown to you in that video clip, number 10 behind the plate in the uh, 74 World Series. Didn't have to move the glove very much. Nope. Him. Put it just up and get that target. Here's John Mabry. Not only great numbers against the Royals. Look at his overall batting average this year. And uh, what a two and a half week roll he is on. It's jammed on this one. Navy Perez broke back now in. And the shortstop will take it to the side two away. David Justice. Hanging out with Mike Sweeney over at first base after his leadoff single here. Jerry Zito knows that uh, this quite possibly could be an all-star matchup on the mound. Barry is an all-star, and Paul Bird really could be. I'm not saying he should be. Joe Torre did a nice job overall, but uh, facts are facts. He and Mike Messina is also a Yankee, the only 11-game winners in the American League that are not on the all-star team. Barry knows he's going to have to be good today against Bird. Pitchers will tell you they're not facing the opposing pitcher, but they realize the opposing pitcher might not give up very many runs to his offense. That's where the battle comes in. Bird flips this uh, sign, flips it foul against Paul Bird. Bird, 31 years of age, was a Cleveland Indian draft pick out of LSU in 1991. Never pitched for them, went to the Mets for a couple of years, a half year in Atlanta. He was a Philly for three years, and Paul Bird was an all-star in 1999, went 15 and 11 with the Phils. Once again, fouls it off, and he was traded to Kansas City last year in early June for right-handed pitcher Jose Santiago. And initially, he pitched uh, very well for the Royals. He won five straight games was their pitcher of the month in August, but then he had a sore shoulder after making just one start in September. Tomato signs, towering drive to left field, coming over as a bomb. That ball going to land back in the crowd. 
as Omedo got way under that one and lifted it. Banez couldn't quite get there, and retreating back to first base is David Justice. We do it again in 0-2. Third gives a big wind up and he really pulls the string on a lot of his pitches and adds some track so well that he just fools the hitters. He just try to lay back and almost go up the middle opposite field for the hitters. Similar to what David Justice did to start the inning. Lato again flips it foul. The shoulder problem he had last year and he also had scope surgery and his 2000 season uh, curtailed with the fills after his 99 all-star year that's a big reason why he has gone to this old-fashioned rocking type of windup take a strain off of his shoulder he says got the knee-high socks working he's a throwback hello middle sign started out 0-2 last time he was in a very zero game similar situation fouled off four and then a Boom. home run eddie guardano it's number seven. Maybe he's fouled off enough to have time, Paul Bird. A.J. Hinch sets up away. Olmedo hit it hard to center. Beltron will get there as Olmedo hit that a little too hard. And the center fielder raced it down. So Justice stranded after a leadoff single. Catfish type game, 0-0 zero, zero after two. Got to stock up on all the items. Less chance to see the A's in uh, 10 days. This is the final game of the first half. He's off for the break. Resume the second half in Baltimore and Tampa. Will not be back here until the 17th of July to take on the Angels. Here's A.J. Hinch taking a strike from Barry Zito. Angels beat the uh, Devil Rays last night 4-3 to three, while Seattle lost again. Beaten by the Twins. Jay pops this one back foul. We'll check it out, but uh, we will have the play. Ball comes back to him and he makes the catch. The Ramones got the first out here of the third inning, retiring a former teammate A.J. Hinch. Everybody's heading to Milwaukee for the All-Star well, Game, including John Truck and Tom Arnold. They're going to invade the All-Star Game and wreak havoc with the game's best players coming up on the best damn show, sports show periods All-Star Summer, which continues tomorrow night. And again, the competition you've always dreamed of. Who wants to date a pro cheerleader tomorrow at 8 o'clock and then again at 10 o'clock here on Fox Sports Net. Carlos Pablis, who struck out to open the game, is in for a second at bat here in the third. There's a strike. Beautiful pitch, bottom of the zone, and Dan Iasonia. I wonder what time his plane leaves today. Did he just reach down? Did Fables just reach down and uh, touch below his leg to show where the strike was, or the pitch was? Wow. That's showing up the umpire, yeah, isn't I, it? He bent down. He leaned down, and I think... Got to let it roll a little bit more. Yeah. 0 2 pitch now, and he strikes out. Let's see what Fables does as he walks away. Got one very low call to strike, then swung at a high one. Fourth strikeout for Zito, and Fabulous has struck out twice, boss. A good fastball down, good fastball up, and the multicolored Z. This is a two strike, uh, the second strike. He dropped the bat, and let's see what he does. No, he was yeah. picking up his bat. I, I, I didn't see him initially drop his bat. I thought maybe he, yeah, I think it would have been gone if he had touched his leg. He dropped the bat on purpose there. And Make a little statement, or he just dropped the bat. About one Gonzalez statement last night, yeah. with uh, holding the bat on his shoulder. And got tossed. Mm -hmm. Juan gone. And here's Luis Alasea, former Texas Ranger himself. And Alasea popped out to second his first time. Very Zito pitching very well. Starting well. He's had a little bit of a problem as we've noted getting off to uh, good starts in games, but Barry came out throwing all of the stuff with a good action and command. Two one pitch. Mass ball, and that's pulled right to Chavez. Eric has it. And on to Romano Sides. Tidy one, two, three for Barry Zito there. We played two and a half. Bird versus Zito. Zero zero. 
First pitch here at the bottom of the third, a cold strike as Dan Iasonia again uh, showing off a low strike zone. Eric Burns hitting out of the number eight hole today, followed by Ramon Hernandez. This pitch is up, popped a shallow right. Carlos Fabless will make the over the shoulder catch there. Brandon Berger was coming in. Uh, nicely done. Eric Burns is retired one away. The A's hitters really have not had a very good swing all day. And Fabless with his back to the infield. And watch the ball right in the glove. Good play with his right fielder. Berger coming on. Has the sunglasses, used his glove. Help shade his eyes. Look down sunglasses, I think, still are darker and uh, probably would do better. Players like to wear them the wrap around, so uh, I guess they look better. Style. Although, does it does it help them the rest of the game, Ray, before they actually have to look up into the sun? Is it? Flip down, you just flip down, the ball's coming your way. These glasses, they can obviously just keep the sun out and the rays of the sun perpetually. Maybe you need two different versions of that. A little button and make them a little darker when you have to look up. <laughs> Somebody's going to hear that, and here we're going to have an invention coming out. I want a piece. Good luck. I'm sure they'll come running to you when they The Optograph, Navin Johnson. A piece of that action. There's Ramon Hernandez walking on four pitches. See how he hesitated before he hit it to first base. He realized that uh, Mr. Isonia has called some of those down low for strikes. Paul Bird got off to a great start this year. We noted that he had eight victories right away. He was eight and two to start the year with an ERA of just 288. Mark Ellis flying to left his first time this afternoon. That's a strike. As he, again, he bangs the bottom of the zone. 8-2 over his first 11 starts. His last six starts, he has won three and lost three, and his ERA is at six and a half. Ellis, lazy fly ball to left. Perez will get back and take it. Their middle infielders cover a lot of ground and make up for the uh, corner outfielders here. Fabulous got great range going out on the balls in the air, Ray, and likewise for Nafi Perez. Oh, Again, a ball that got in on the hands of Ellis. Perez out quickly, then looking back to see what might be happening with Ramon, which is nothing except getting back to first base. I saw that one out of problem. Long lifts one to left center field. Beltron coming over. Also, Raul Ibanez from left, but it will be Beltron who makes the catch. One, two, three, with a walk mixed in there. Zero, zero after three. This is our first game on Fox Sports Net since the uh, passing of the splendid uh, splinter. Ted Williams on Friday, so appropriately our Affleck trivia question today. Wants to know about Teddy Ball game. You know he's in Cooperstown, but what other national Hall of Fame is Ted Williams a member of? And we'll answer that coming up in the bottom of the inning. This one is popped up on the very first pitch seen by Beltron. Tejada way over, but it will be Ellis who makes the catch, staying with that ball. And he retires Beltron. One away here to start the fourth. I'm surprised that when a fly ball or pop up goes up, that every other infielder outfielder does not just get around and just in case the ball hits off his glove and it pops up, somebody can catch it. I think Barry Zito is holding his breath every time a ball goes up now. Better to be a uh, ground ball pitcher today, yeah. but Barry does get a lot of fly balls, unlike Holder and Hudson. Mike Sweeney, single to right center in his first time today. Teddy Ball game. Is it some sort of military Hall of Fame, possibly? He's also a great outdoorsman. Fly Fishing Hall of Fame? I'm sure there's one. That is 2 0 on Sweeney. And 
Williams was a Marine flyer in World War II and uh, later on during the uh, Korean conflict. Eric Burns going to bust that bubble, pop that balloon. He's coming on by. Eric Burns is glad to be out there. Two straight games. He told me before the game he's not started back-to-back -back games since uh, the A's were in Boston and later on to Toronto in mid-May. 3-0 pitch to Sweeney. And that is ball four. So Sweeney on base twice today with a single and now a walk. Joe Randa will bat. At first, we'll tell you about the Reds, Whites, and Blues Wine Festival coming your way on July the 20th before the reunion of the 72 world champions get to the East Side Club from four to six. Admission is free with your game ticket. And some of the best winemakers from around this great region of winemaking, 25 winemakers in all, Sonoma Creek, Kendall Jackson. Live music, autograph session with the 72 World Championship Club. That's going to be terrific. So call 510-762-BALL to be here on July the 20th. Here's Joe Randa. Randa fly to center his first time today. It's this one to left field. Eric Burns coming towards the line to get it. It'll hang up long enough and with a reach. Burns has it. Retreating is Sweeney. Rand is retired two-way. Well, the first step for Eric Burns, he's at full speed. And off the end of the bat, special because that's usually when a big swing on a changeup, but Burns gets to it easily enough. Boy, he got a big glove. He's a monster. They talked about Gary Sheffield's Arm protection being four inches too long. I think Burns' glove might be four inches. Of course, outfielders are allowed to have a much bigger glove. Terrence Long wishes he had another couple inches on his glove yesterday. And he almost brought uh, Tucker's home run back. Yeah, we haven't talked about that play. That was a wild one. Mm -hmm. Michael Tucker in the 10th inning hit a drive off of Billy Koch. Looked like a, uh, a two-run homer, possible game-winning homer in the top of the 10th, but it turned out to be, as Tucker described, that a 400 Five foot single off a 97 mile an hour fastball. Sweeney running again. Ramon throw a can in, but late. And in there safely is Sweeney. Got a pretty nice jump. So Sweeney steals second base. And he's down there with two outs. Let's go back to Michael Tucker, though, in the 10th ray. As you mentioned, Long he almost got this one. He, he went back, and as he goes up, he has the ball in his glove, but it's a snow cone right in the webbing of his glove. And right here is where he thought. Has Mike Caruso thought he had caught the ball and Caruso had started back towards first and it wasn't Tucker passing Caruso it was Caruso passing Tucker going back to the back but T long said he kind of got it up in the webbing if he had it in the pocket of his glove he might have held on but he went down and hit the fence and the ball popped out and that's why he was showing the, the look of disgust because he knew he had it I was telling T this morning, you should have played it off like you caught it. <laughs> on the end of the dugout like you had in your glove, and let's see what the uh, Caruso may have just, well, only would have been the second out of the <laughs> inning. But he eventually would have had to throw a ball or something. You had one in your back pocket. Some guys have been known to try to do Mantle that. Mantle did that during the days of the Monuments, right? Yeah. That was a great effort, though, to get over that wall. And Michael Tucker, he thought he, had, he couldn't even run around the bases. Mike Caruso, as you saw, right. he got to run around the bases after Tucker's home run. Strange game sometimes, huh? Meanwhile, 2-1 pitch to Raul Ibanez, and he gets patient here and takes ball three. So in a 0-0 game, top four, Zito works to Ibanez with first base open. The struggling Nafi Perez, although Nafi did single his last time up, he's on deck. Yes, fouls it back, and Zito takes it out full now. <laughs> the A's lost yesterday in uh, 10 by the score of 4-3. to three. One here by the same score in dramatic fashion on Friday night, 4-3, and uh, Ibanez's big uh, two-run air won the game on July the 4th, 3-2. to two. Ibanez just a piece. Stays alive at three and two. And him with a curveball, his first at bat. Okay. 
beautiful day. Get a little hot dog. Get your A's cap. It's like a Rockwell picture there. Yeah? A kid with a hat that's kind of catfish-like, where he's laying out his big mop of hair and the hot dog working. 3-2 pitch. Ibanez staying in here. I'll tell you, another curveball wouldn't be that bad because as hot as Ibanez has been in this series and even before coming in, Perez in the on-deck circle, I think Ibanez is sitting fastball. That's why curveball just barely got a piece, but he was ready on the 3-1 fastball and the second 3-2 fastball. It's ready after a walk and a stolen base in position. Curveball, this one he does not get a piece of. Zito tumbles it by and strikes out Ibanez. So Barry gets out of it unscored upon. The meat of the order for the A's do win it, led by the All-Star. Ted Williams weekend here. We are celebrating with his loss on uh, Friday and our loss to Teddy Ball game. We know he's in Cooperstown, the Baseball Hall of Fame. What are the National Hall of Fame is Ted Williams in? You know, being great fly fisherman boss, I guess they send you to the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame. It'll be some all-star game on Tuesday night, huh? With mm -hmm. the, uh, I guess it happens in threes. Incredible. Jack Buck will be recognized. Daryl Kyle and now Ted Williams, who was at the all-star game just three years ago in Boston. What a moment that was. Yelts a hot of the center. Beltron racing back. This one's over his head. And a warning track. He makes the catch. Boy, is he good out there. Carlos Beltron. Miguel is twice on this series, driven the ball solidly to right center against him, and Beltran has made the catch after both balls. But still, Paul Bird is doing just enough, but you don't feel you can get that good swing. That might have been just a little bit towards the end of the bat. Beltran with a good read on the ball, had it all the way. Good range, goes back with the ball very well, comes in. Been a lot of talk about Mike Sweeney possibly being dealt. I, I don't see that happening with him signing the new contract. But if the Royals ever make Carlos Beltran available, and he is going to jump up in salary this year, he's think he's gone through one arbitration and he's got one more coming up this offseason. I think a lot of teams would like Carlos Beltran. Justice grounds this one to the other Carlos. Carlos Fabless. He throws out David Justice two away. Mike Sweeney signed in the offseason a contract extension five year deal for fifty five million. That deal does not take effect until next year. He's working under his former deal. So he cannot become a free agent. He has a strange clause in there. If the Royals are not a 500 team or better club, he can get out of it after two years. So he's bound to the Royals remainder this year, next year and the year after. They're hoping to get to 500 and keep him. Eric Chavez lifts this one to right. He doesn't see it. Berger. And he will not get back in time. Chavez to second. Chavez will go to third. And he will make it. Oh. Tell you what, and a great play at third base by Joe Randa because nobody was backing up. They were late. If that ball gets by him, Chavez circles the bases. I don't know why. I mean, Eric, as he got to second base, kind of stopped. And they had to look to Ron Washington. Well, when you see a guy throw up his hands and he doesn't see the ball, just run hard. Run hard till somebody stops you. And it was a close play at third base. But again, Randa coming off the bag to keep the ball from going past him. Once again, the Oakland Coliseum strikes, regarded by many outfielders and infielders. This is the toughest place to play in a day like this and Eric Chavez gets a triple out of it. Eric is running all the way as Brandon Berger just lost the ball never saw it it was nowhere near it picked it up late but could not make the catch so with two out Chavez at third here's Mabry with a chance to give the A's a run. You know probably would be best if an outfielder I mean there's nobody's going to be able to get to him to help it so why throw up the arms and let anybody know that he doesn't see it. Maybe he'll hold Chavez to a single or, or a double. But it's just that helpless feeling. I think you're looking for divine intervention there. Can Randa make this play? No. Neither can the left fielder of Banya as that ball lands on the out of the bullpen. 
Aranda makes a great play, as you know, that ball gets passed. Eric Chavez is in the dugout with a one to nothing lead. Actually, Banyas was coming in from left and Bird was backing up, but uh, it would have it would have split them and gone over the, to the tarp. And Bird was more towards third. The ball was going to go uh, out down near the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Bird would not have been able to make that play. So he thought he had the third out. And now he's got to throw an 0-2 pitch to one of the hottest hitters in baseball. Avery, this one's trouble to left field. They drop in there and score a run. It will. Chavez is in. And the A's have a one to nothing lead. Mabry with a blooper after Brandon Berger loses the ball in the sun. One nothing A's. I'll tell you what, uh, John Mabry is an excellent hitter because as he said when he hit the double the other night, driving the two runs the ninth inning, they're pitching me away, I'm looking for it. He looked for a pitch away from him. He didn't hit it hard, but when you look out there, Instead of trying to pull the ball, just serve it. I mean, he's getting good at that, just serving the ball down the left field line. Yeah, we say it's a blooper, and if you're Paul Bird, you're agonizing here because you give up a ball that's a sun ball and it should have been caught, and then a blooper and a run scores, but that's no coincidence that uh, John Mabry keeps doing that. Mm -hmm. That is his swing. That's the type of swing he laid on Roberto Hernandez here in the bottom of the ninth on Friday night to score the two runs and get the A's the victory. Really, it's a matter of a hitter recognizing what a pitcher is trying to do to him to get him out. And they are staying away from him, and he is just going to the opposite field. He tries to pull, it's going to be a ground ball. Romero signs once again, falls into the early two-strike hole like he did in his first at-bat. He lined out to center eventually. Bird also got Mabry down 0-2, but couldn't put him away. Signs to right, Berger going forward in the corner, and this one he sees, and makes a nice catch on. Unlike the one that Eric Chavez struck. Eric Chavez blinds Brandon Berger by the light. Way back over your head, Brandon. That's a triple to the A's, make it one nothing. Perez drops down a bunt. Zito flips, and safe is the call by Bill Miller at first base. Nafee Perez dropped down a a nice bunt there. Barry Zito got off the mound quickly, but he and Sines could not get there in time. And it's an infield bunt single for Perez. I think the confusing thing, Omedo Sines, once he saw that Zito had the ball, he hesitated and go to the back. And Barry was off the mound very quickly with the push of the bunt. And there's Omedo kind of frozen right there. Maybe he was waiting to see if he caught it or not. At that point, you're in no man's land anyway. you got to go to the bag. And if he doesn't get the ball, it's going to be a base hit anyway, because nobody's going to get to the back. And there's the foot race. Might have had him anyway. Maybe he was thinking Zito was going to pick it up and race to the bag himself, and he wasn't sure whether he wanted to go to the bag to get in his way, but he does hesitate, and that's the difference in the play. The rest clearly safe. Now here's Brandon Berger, who lost that fly ball off the bat of Chavez in the bottom of the fourth. He'll look to uh, make Perez's butt more meaningful here in his at bat as he takes the pitch inside and the count is 2-0. Oh. Watch Olmedo. See if his foot gets on the bag before Perez hits the bat. Ooh, it's pretty close. Umpire's right there looking at it. I don't know. Uh, he made a definitive call. He's out. Yeah, he is out. Olmedo got there anyway. The replay clearly showed that Romano signs got the foot in the time. So Bill Miller involved in it again. He was the umpire at uh, third base on Friday night that did not see the ball off the bat of Joe Randa that clearly went over the yellow line for a home run. Called it uh, a double. See, he's got the wrapped around glasses too. If he had the foot down, he would have had a better shot at it. He, you know, he and Brandon Berger may want to compare eyewear here, Ray. <laughs> Bill Miller at first base this afternoon after being at third on Friday. Berger and tight Zito comes and Berger bounces it back. Berger was uh, the guy at the plate in the second. You recall first and second and two outs hit the ground ball up the middle and uh, Miguel Tejada made a tremendous play ranging up the middle flip to Mark Ellis in time to force out Nafi Perez. The Burgers had a rough game all the way around, both at the plate and in right field. 
the two pitch. Strike three called. Zito slips one in there. Now that is a real bad day. And this is a no chance to hit this curveball. You talk about freezing. You just froze it and just watch the ball right into the catcher's mitt and wait for the umpire to call you out. That is an outstanding curve. Now when the players vote on the different pitches, who which pitcher has the best pitch? Zito's got to be top of the list of curve. Maybe the changeup. Pedro has an outstanding changeup, but uh, Zito's curve is just outstanding. The lefties and the righties. Well, Baseball America comes out with that just about every year at mid-year. Who had the best curveball last year? I can't recall. Bert do, do it by Lee. It's still Bert. <laughs> he's been retired for 20 years, and he's still got. It's a pretty good curveball he's got. Tom Flash Gordon used to always yeah. win that. Remember the former Royal pitcher? Hunter moving on the pitch. A.J. Hinch with the hit and run fouls it straight back, so Nafi Perez goes back to first base. A.J. Hinch back in Oakland this weekend, made the start on Friday night and doubled in his first at bat since returning. A.J.'s going to have a busy All Star break, huh? In fact, this is a matchup here between Hinch and Zito. Is a matchup of the respective uh, player reps. Each club time called by the plate umpire, by Sonia. AJ Hinch was the A's player rep, and then uh, when he left, uh, Tim Hudson took over. Now Zito is the player rep. Huddy's the assistant still, though. Big meeting tomorrow. In Chicago is a magnet. Again, the assistant. Big meeting tomorrow in Chicago. I hear uh, Tom Glavin was talking this morning that they may not announce a strike date tomorrow. That uh, they may talk about it but not announce one. Why? I agree. I, I think that from the fan standpoint, just let them go. The more you talk about it, the more they're going to get discussed. Everybody else. Hard to believe. Here we are in the year 2002, eight years after 94, and talking about the same issues. And you look at a franchise like the Royals. They really have never been able to recover after what happened in 94. The Royals, the Toronto Blue Jays, these franchises have been really hurt. So you know, quick throw and a bounce. And the A's were hurt for many, many years until Young faces arrive. People like Barry Zito to turn it around. And there will not be a Cal Ripken Jr. around to uh, have his streak going. Zito steps off here. Jason Grimsley. Stretching out, you might say, in the uh, Royal Bullpen. Oh, he's a late guy. <laughs> a two pitch. A curveball missed. That was a ball and two strikes. Looks like A.J. Hinch recognized the spin on the curveball and started the swing, but just hoped that it was going to be out of the strike zone. At that time, a hard curve from Barry, which is a good one to throw. another second in the inning and they've both been called Berger and now Hinch takes one two away backed it up with another hard curve this one a little bit higher and at least went across the plate AJ didn't think so pretty nasty though huh AJ that's number seven for Zito today came in at 99 Next on the list is Freddy Garcia. Major up to 141, but not healthy enough to be an all-star. Had a great outing against the uh, Tigers on Saturday. A 
on just one hit, struck out eight in five innings. Well, one pitch is fouled straight back off the bat of Carlos Fabus. Red Sox lost today, a wild one. Tigers beat them nine to eight at Fenway Park. They have a new first baseman? They have a new first baseman, the Tigers. Carlos Pena went three for four, a couple of doubles, a walk, and an RBI in his Tigers debut, doubled in his first at bat as a Tiger. Probably took a red eye to get there, too. To Boston? <laughs> it's a good place for him to go before the break, huh? Swing and a miss. Barry Zito strikes out the side. Berger and Hinch looking Ray, and then he goes at Fabless to get him swinging. Great location, fastball inside up, and threw it right by him. Strikeout number eight for Barry. Sports World is going to be Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so the Red Caddy has got a little road trip going. John Cruck and Tom Arnold will head to the All-Star Game, and they're going to wreak havoc with some of the very best players in the sport. And John Cruck will uh, go up against Randy Johnson again. That should be fun. Best damn sports show period. All-Star Summer continues tomorrow night. This one is well struck by Eric Burns. Beltron will not be putting this one back. What a shot by Burns. Bye-bye, Birdie. Well, he crushes Paul Bird here. And for Eric Burns, his second homer of the year. And Art Howe wanted to give Jermaine Dye a day off today to give him four days before the resumption of play on Thursday. And he puts Eric Burns in two hits yesterday, and he just crushes a fastball from Paul Bird. And what a swing. You talk about somebody that comes out prepared to play the game. And that's Eric Burns. No doubt. Our Chevrolet drive of the game. An impressive blast. Now Paul Bird does give him up. Jeff Supon gave up one to David Justice here on Friday night. He's 22nd of the year, but the two Royals are right behind Ramon Ortiz for most bombs allowed in the American League. It's a good way to get our Volvo Grand Slam inning underway. Dave Norris only hoping that Burnsy may get a second at bat in the inning. Dave is our winner from Sacramento. He knows Eric Burns well, the former River Cat. And Dave will be making the trek. Now an I-80 here to Oakland to watch the A's uh, play later in the summer, but Dave looking to drive in style in a brand new Volvo S60 if they can get a, uh, a grand slam in. And they've got the solo to open, now they want a slam. Ron Hernandez in the top of the order, Mark Ellis, T. Long, and then the all-star Tejada. Now it is two and two to Ramon. Ramon walked on four pitches his first time up today, back in the third. Bird is able to offset the uh, home run total by not walking very many. That ball is sent to Sweeney. Nice play. Flip. Bird covering. Nicely done by Mike Sweeney, who was a converted catcher. Getting better and better at first base. One away. Hey, what's amazing about him, and remember, he hasn't played in three days yet, uh, opposite uh, field shot and Sweeney diving and then getting up quickly. Nice speed to Paul Bird. Bird gets out of the way and. Good play by Mike Swinney, and that's a lot of reasons why he's an all-star. He hits well, but hey, he's the leader in this ball club. Great guy. And now showing he plays some defense at first. Mark Ellis now, Foss. Ellis is fly to left. He is popped to short. Takes that pitch up and in. That's a couple of homers on this homestand. His first two major league home runs. This one's fouled straight back. Eric Burns, he is something else. That's his second of the year, his fifth major league home run. Now you watch him in batting practice, Foss. And he puts on a show. He hits him as as far as anybody on this roster. And of course last year when he was in Sacramento, he worked on his power game and had a good good season hitting the home run because he felt that playing the outfield, especially the corner position, it was going to be important for him to 
they hit home runs. And he had a big home run this season last year. He hit 20 with uh, the River Cast. Then he hit three in his 19 games with the A's. This one's going to be tough for Berger coming in. He won't get there. And Fabless could not bail him out going out from second. So Mark Ellis bloops one into right field. Over the head of Fabless and uh, Berger could not make it in time. So he's on base here with one out in the fifth. You know, Greg, we're talking about uh, Eric Burns. When Burns came in today, he realized the move was going to be made. He actually looked right here in this column. He didn't see his name, and he said, uh-oh, I'm gone. He thought he had actually been sent down because he always looks here. He never looks at the lineup because he hasn't played in so many games. But uh, if he had looked, oh, he was there. And Art Howe very happy today that he's in there because he's giving the ace a second run. But he said, I was scared. I said, I'm gone, I'm gone. <laughs> The first place you look. That's right. right. When, when you're not playing every day, guys come in and they know they're playing. They don't even bother to look. They just figure they're in the lineup someplace. And but Burns, he always looks at the bottom. But as Rex Hudler said, just as long as you're one of those 25 names, doesn't matter. As long as you're on that card, that's important. Long the other way, base hit. Ellis goes to second base. So Dave Norris in Sacramento. Got to like what he sees here. First and second, just one out with Tejada coming up. And then David Justice. Miguel Tejada has not yet picked up a base hit today. He is 0 for 2. He popped out to first, then he lined out to center. So Dave Norris, even better odds for you. Miguel, in eight games out of every 10, third best in the major leagues, he usually gets a hit. Well, Miguel could keep this inning alive for Justice. Would be a, a grand inning for Dave Norris. I wonder if Miguel Tejada even checks the lineup card when he comes in. Does no. he even look at it? Does he know where it is in the clubhouse? <laughs> That's a good point. He might because it's usually right next to where it says stretch at 10 15. So he's, he's got to check that. He's got to look at that. And they didn't send me to Sacramento, have they? No. <laughs> I guess I'll check. Staying down low in the strike zone. Of course, that's a pitch that Burns hit for a home run. But there's no doubt that both sides are a little bit uh, curious about the strike zone up. I saw you today. Down low. Mm. And, you know, maybe just below the, the kneecap, but still, it's a pretty uh, pretty tall strike zone. He's caused some ones up in the zone as well. Now, Tahana faces this one, and he's hot. Tell and I, Sonia, and I'm in a hurry to get out of here too. I'm going to the All Star game. Let's play this game all the way through. He strikes out two away. Oh, I got the breaking ball here. I really want to jump on a fastball, but Bird fooled him and threw the slider off speed and him way out in front. But of course, in Miguel's mind, the two previous pitches that he thought were called strikes and were called strikes, but he did not think they were. Justice makes the pitch inside for a ball. David singled to left his first time up, then bounced out to second against Paul Bird. And he's now lead 2 0 on the Eric Burns home run. Strike. David Justice in his fifth home run of the season on Friday night and that was the 299th of his career so he's sitting on a big round number. There's a strike. Justice who knows the zone as well as anybody you can see by his reaction he didn't like that one. But he's not, he's not gonna let him affect him. Backdoor breaking ball. And of course Contention is does it come around the plate to get to the catcher's mitt? And if it hits the if it hits the corner, it really should be towards the middle of the plate. Comes up and away. Very smart pitcher here. He's getting a lot of latitude, Ray. So let's just see how far this guy will go. If he stays away, David Justice will try to do what John Mabry did earlier. That's hit the ball to left field and go in there. 
but Jeff is ready for it. Rifles one to right. Berger back to the warning track. He leaps in this one. He gets up against the wall. Nice catch by Berger off the bat of Justice. Better luck next time, Dave Norris. Burns the solo, though. Two nothing A's after five. Luis Alessia showing a bunt, and he takes uh, the first one, tried to bunt at the first one and miss it. Yeah, they love Zito, and they should. Barry on his way to Milwaukee in the All-Star game. Besting Paul Bird here by a score to two to nothing at her SBC Pacific Bell line score. Now to say the switch hitter. Oh, nasty curveball. And that tumbles over for a strike, and uh, Barry gets ahead 0-2. I think the greatest compliment for any pitcher to see hitters trying to bunt. Now let's say has tried, he missed. Perez did bunt, was successful, but uh, figure they can't hit the curveball, might as well try to bunt. Now Ali Sayah takes a uh, ball one count is a ball and two strikes. And to say a Beltron on the All-Star Mike Sweeney here in the Royal Sixth and a uh, gorgeous Sunday afternoon. To wind up the first half of the year. This one is fouled off and uh, all the celebrities are out today. P.J. Carlissimo, former coach of your Golden State Warriors, is uh, here visiting the day. He's dropped by the booth. A little, little too hot out there in the sun for you, <laughs> A lot too hot. I saw Ray sitting up here. I said, let me come up and say hello here. And <laughs> see you two guys. It's like a better deal. There's a strike, and that'll say is out for the first out. I, you and I have worked basketball together over the years, but uh, we've also talked a lot of baseball. You like your ball, don't you? I love baseball. In fact, I played my college baseball coach, Gil McDougal, oh, who's really? a San Francisco native. Uh, yeah. I didn't didn't distinguish myself, but I did play for four years at Fordham and loved it and played this position. I was a catcher. You were a catcher. Oh, yeah. you're intelligent. You're more yeah. intelligent than I thought. Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'd heard you say that about a basketball coach. <laughs> Now, how often do you get out here? Because I know you love the game. A couple times. Not as much as I should, to be honest with you. I have to confess, my wife is lifelong Giants fan, so she uh -oh. gets me over there a little more. Uh -oh. but I knew I was coming. We did see this gentleman pitch a great game last Sunday. So when we go, we go watch the A's the beat Giants? the Giants yeah. there. So we Seven get a little, nothing last little bragging rights. You were here so we, when we were, had the shutout? We were there watching that one, so we, we enjoyed it. Um, so in other words, the A's played the Giants, so you got to come. A's played the Giants, and, and <laughs> she doesn't have to twist my arm as much to be there. Don't you uh, have Fossey's direct line to get tickets here? He can, <laughs> he can take care of you. Well, yeah, Jim Wilson's my guy. It's a hard way to go, but I've got to stay loyal to him. Yeah, we'll take care of you. When you can get him off the golf course. <laughs> and the restaurant. Now tell me about Mike Dunley before we let you go. I know you know his, uh, his dad real well. And Chavez, well, Chavez going to make it across the diamond and a tag back. What a play by Olmedo Sainz. Whoa. Chavez, nice pick, but Olmedo Sainz comes off the line and tags out Mike Sweeney to get the out. 2 nothing A's. Derek Chavez living right today in our Lexus line score. Check out this defensive play right in the play by Sainz at first base. Oh, back in, and Chavez didn't know how quickly he had to release a little off target, but uh, Olmedo hmm. very quickly coming off the bag, and Mike Sweeney smelled a base hit and was uh, trying to get another hit today. And Eric Chavez last time up lifted that drive to deep right. And Brandon Berger lost the ball, landed over his head for a clean triple. Get off the power there, off the auxiliary scoreboard foul. And then Eric came around to score on the base hit by Mabry. Then later Eric Burns with a bomb. The A's lead 2-0. Heading here in the bottom of the sixth. Paul Bird. It's a strike on Chavez. We are visiting with the longtime head coach of the Seton Hall Pirates. Went to the NCAA final game and then uh, later in the NBA with the Blazers and the Warriors and PJ Carlos we're going to hang around and talk a little Mike Dunleavy what kind of player the Warriors get? I love him uh, I thought it was a great pick he knows how to play basketball uh, GP I think that's the thing you you know you'll enjoy watching him the most he's you know there's so many guys that are talented can do this or that and it's caught by Fabulous PJ and Eric Chavez retired but what I like about Dunleavy is he knows how to play the game. You know, he figures. I mean, his, his father, a great player and a great coach, and playing for Mike Krzyzewski at Duke. He knows how to play basketball. I think he's going to fit in. He knows how to defend. He's very gifted with the ball. He can put it on the floor. He can create some opportunities for other people. I think that's something that's going to help the Warriors an awful lot. Um, it's, just, it's just hard with so many young guys in the Western Conference today to be successful. Do you worry about Dunleavy at all? 
not having a real pro position. They use that term in Boston basketball, tweeners, where a guy, you know, can he step out and play at three? Does he, is he beefy enough to guard guys at four? Do you see that as a concern? I don't see it, because again, because the fact that he knows how to play. I think he's one of those guys you just put out there, figure out what he is. And he could be anything from a two, three, and if he puts on enough weight, maybe ultimately a four, but he's so good with the ball, I'd love to see him at three or two. Maybe with a clean single. The guy's been kind of a baseball version of a tweener, John Mabry. Where do you play him? <laughs> Batter's box, whether it's the outfield or first ray, or he's also played some third in his career. This guy's an amazing hitter. Well, he hits some tweeners, too, right? Uh, whether they're <laughs> not playing, left or right. Gets out in front of a, of a pitch that uh, Bird try to change up, go inside on him after pitching him away. Single to left field, now he pulls the ball to right field. That's how smart of a hitter he is, able to realize that the pitcher's going to make changes. Avery two for three today, just red hot leading into the All-Star break. Lato signs lifts the first one out of play foul for a strike. I know you did a lot of NBA uh, playoff basketball this year with NBC Sports. Did you get to up to Arco to watch the Kings and Lakers at all? I Christmas did. I finals? saw them a bunch. I had a couple of Kings games. Mostly I had the Kings on the road. I really enjoyed them. That series, we were doing Boston and New Jersey, unfortunately. Uh, the Western Conference Finals was incredible. They had such a great, they did everything but beat them. They couldn't put the nail in the coffin. But, you know, as you well know, as long as the Lakers have those two guys, I don't know you're going to be able to beat them. Although they, they came about as close as you can without actually beating him. In fact, a lot of people thought the officiating helped the Lakers a lot, P.J., and they actually uh, had some rough calls in Game 6. Well, they did have rough calls in, in, in Game 6, Greg, but, the, you know, they got calls. It was a Game 4. I mean, people forget about the ones that Shaq gets in foul trouble early, you know, and the Lakers do the complaining. So I, I just think you got to beat him. Uh, it's like, you know, your heavyweight championship fight. you got to knock the guy out. They did everything but... They couldn't quite close the deal. And, you know, people talk about the discrepancy in fouls. In game seven, if the Kings had made their fouls, it was over. The Kings hurt themselves by not making free throws in critical situations. And, you know, Peja was banged up. They, you know, they had some things go against them. But uh, they had a fabulous year. I was talking to the Maloofs the other day. They got so much to be proud of. Rick Adelman, your old buddy, did such a great job. He did an exceptional job. But um, the Lakers are never going to go quietly. I mean, I think you're going to have to put a stake right through Shaq's heart if you're ever going to beat that. The Yankees of the NBA. I'll tell you what, they keep loading, yeah. they load up. Uh, same way the Yanks did. So Ted Lilly downstairs, who I think is a great acquisition, but the Yankees are going good as it is, and they're picking up guys left and right. But the difference is, if the Yankees, with the, with the pickups they've made this week, they get Raul Mondesi and they get Jeff Weaver, their payroll now is at $130 million. And the Lakers' payroll is high. Obviously, but the NBA is different. It doesn't quite work that way. Well, the cap. The exactly. What is that? <laughs> what? Donald, Donald Fear just fell off his. That's something chair. you're going to hear about in the coming uh, weeks and months. Huh? Yeah, that's all you're going to do about it is here. <laughs> well, most teams, other than Arizona and New York, know about it. Yeah. Count is two and two on uh, Omedo signs. Romano lined out to center, then flied out to right. John Mabry, the runner at first base. Well, for those other clubs, it's called a budget. Tomato. That ball hit his back. Yeah. It did not hit Omedo. They almost always do, but this one hit the bat, and it's a foul ball. Omedo got hit on the right shoulder. Oh, this is today. And up around the head, that's what concerns him. He, he's not afraid to take one off the lower part of his body. But it's scary up around the head. He got him in the right shoulder, right on the point, right on the bone. And that, that hurts. As you know as a catcher, right? Exactly. Us catchers got to take the hits. <laughs> Tomato drives this one to left center. Well struck. Beltron back. That one's off the very top of the wall. Beltron barehands it and holds Mabry at third. Nicely done by Carlos Beltron. As Olmedo signs, strikes back. One pitch after almost being hit, he hits back and hits it off the very top of the jagged edge. So Barry Zito with a two-run lead, poised to possibly see a double here. Mabry goes to third, and Olmedo signs on second base with a double. Breaking ball after the fastball inside on Olmedo, all over it. And normally, if a fastball comes in, it's a purpose pitch to set up the breaking ball away. And Olmedo must have been thinking, he's going to throw me the breaking ball, stayed right on it, came close hitting a three-run homer. 
or a two run home run anyway. You know, pitching coach John Cumberland is on his way out to talk to uh, Paul Bird. Bird has pitched well, but beginning to tire a little bit here as he approaches 90 pitches. He has 85 on the afternoon. Well, the pressure on Bird really is seeing how well Barry Zito is pitching today. And that pressure realizing you give up one run, he's given up two, and now almost a couple of more. Better to score. Dan Reichert out of the University of uh, the Pacific warming in the bullpen for John Cumberland and Tony Pena. As you see Bird's line pitching well, but the A's getting to him here in the last few innings. Chavez the triple lost in his son, brought in the run off the bat of Mabry, then Burns the big home run, and now Mabry a single followed by the Omedo signs double. And here is Eric Burns with the infield in all the way around. Eric Burns thinking that he wants to do not necessarily the home run, but the same approach that he had in his last at bat when he did homer on the 0 1 fastball. And Burns takes it away. The count is 2 0. First base open here. Ramon Hernandez on deck. We're uh, visiting with PJ Carlissimo. I know when we watch NBA games together, you're, you're always coaching him, even though you're on television. When you watch a baseball game, being a former catcher and knowing the game as well as you do, do you? You coach it along with the managers, PJ? I really do, and I, and I tell you, we're so fortunate in the Bay Area. I love the Art's going to start sending a car for me, though. Every time I come, the A's win. It's good. <laughs> Maybe today it's not going to be a one-run game for a change, but I love to watch the managers and uh, Art in particular. I'm not afraid to do something, you know, unconventional every once in a while. It's Omedo the other day. How about Omedo on that, that home run oh, man. and the you game? Know. Uh, it was fantastic. No, I really enjoy it, and, and I love the fact that he's getting so much credit. Somebody wrote a good story in the paper this morning about his runner-up manager of the year every year. What a great job he's done with the A's. And Burns on his way to first, called back by the plate umpire Dana Isonia. And they're not pitching to Burns. It doesn't appear that way. No, the first, three, after him all. First, first three breaking balls, and that one he just tried to nail the corner and got the call from the umpire. And Burns, he has to be aggressive in the case he gets one to hit. Yeah, I assume you likes that low one. That's a good pitch to take even at three and one. Another slider. All he's going to do is beat it in the ground. And Burns, he agrees. He knew it. Breaking ball. Smart pitcher. He's pitching him carefully, trying to get the strike. Now when he go after him here, though. Reaching now to center. Beltron coming in, makes the catch. Mabry's going to come on in. And the throw to the plate is a little late. Mabry's in there. John Mabry. Scores on the sack fly from Eric Burns. A two RBI game from Burns. Belcher on a good arm, but not quick enough there. And Barry Zito now has a three to nothing lead. Well, that's a signs at second round. Great at bat by Burns. Ball was not hit that deep, but with one out, Ron Washington is going to send the runner. He's going to be aggressive. And John Mabry just beat it. Came off the mound, maybe slowed it down a little bit, but uh, still the aggressiveness by Ron Washington. PJ, you're talking about managers, but you know, coaches the same way, coaching the bases, man. You, you need to have an aggressive guy, and Ron Washington has done that since he's been with the A's. And the guys know you run hard to him, or in a situation like that, there's no second guessing. He's going to send them. You heard her feeling here that uh, Mabry left early. In third base umpire Mike Winters said no, he did not. How many of those appeals are Hardly upheld ever. in the year? Hardly ever. Very few. But it's worth a shot. Doesn't cost yeah. you anything. Oh, absolutely. But uh, you make a great point. Right? You, you have to be aggressive. Uh, you got to manufacture some runs. And the other team's got to know. Your players know that's the way you play. You get more out of it. It's a fun way to play, especially when they work. I mean, sometimes they are not. But uh, when you're aggressive. You're going to force a lot of mistakes. I think the fans love it also. Mm -hmm. Swarms uh, he has thrown gets a fastball past Ramon Hernandez. I'm with you, Ray. I thought they were going to pitch around Burns and go after the moment, drop the infield back, go for a double play. But Burns, he got enough of one to push it out to center. And you know, from the from the 3 0 pitch, it was called a strike. Then the 3 1, the slider low. And the pitcher then starts to think, well, maybe I'll get him. Yeah. And then that's when he leaves one. That's just enough for Burns to hit. 
competitive nature. Huh? You yep. know that. I thought he was hoping for a walk. He was almost <laughs> upset when he got fired called an automatic nope, first but, strike. But at that time, I think he was thinking that with Ramon and first base open, uh, you know, not necessarily against Ramon, but the fact first base open, double play is, is set up at that point. And, but uh, it's just smart hitting when you're not swinging at that pitch. Bird falls down. Slide back on the other end. We are visiting with P.J. Carlissimo. We want to thank you for dropping by today, my friend. I enjoyed it. A great visit with you, Ray. Good seeing you. And, uh, I'm going to be back to bug you a bunch more this summer. Anytime. You and Barnett, you're always dropping by. The A's are there. Here's one coming P.J.'s way. A little bit light. You get a foul ball where you're sitting? Uh, no, I, we're hoping for some of the left-handers. We're sitting right behind the A's dugout. We're hoping for somebody to poke one over there. We'll get back. Uh, my wife, I got to be careful though. Carolyn's expecting our first child August 5th. So congratulations. Uh, jump up in front of her if a fly ball comes that way. And you're up here. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> she likes the sun more than I do. A little PJ, huh? We know. Hopefully not. <laughs> That's, tell her I wish her my best. That's, that's terrific. Appreciate it. Wow. Hey, who do we root for at Seattle and Minnesota? Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And there they were ahead early. And now it's four to one. Seattle comes back. Well, as Lou Pinella said up in Seattle, he wants to look at the board and see that Boston lost and New York lost. <laughs> right. <laughs> they only got half his wish today. Now Ramon walks. There comes Tony Penn yet. Yeah. With Dan Reichert warming in the uh, bullpen. And P.J., does Art Howe know the success of the ball club when you show up? Well, you know, I, I hope that he sees my face and he thinks, hey, we win a lot of basketball games. Well, you may, maybe you should tell him. I, I got, that I way you have to come more. I'm going to tell Boost right now to make sure he mentions it after the game. <laughs> Put him on the, uh, the, the season pass list. P.J., thank you, my friend. All right, Greg, great. Thank good. you. Paul Bird's done. Dan Reichert will pitch when we come back. Hayes lead the Royals 3-0 as they uh, continue to bat here in the bottom of the sixth. Best damn sports show period. All-Star Summer continues tomorrow night when John Crook and Tom Arnold invade the All-Star game and they will wreak havoc with the game's very best players. Also the competition you've always dreamed of. Who wants to date a pro cheerleader? Tomorrow at 8 and again at 10. This is uh, Dan Riker now out of the bullpen for the KC Royals. Record a uh, starter to begin the year, relocated into the bullpen. Former number one draft pick of the Royals, 97 out of uh, UOP. Slowly hit ball, Nathan Perez all over it, will throw our Ellis. And Reichert comes in to strand a couple. The A's get a run though on the sack fly by Burns and lead three nothing after six. Well, they're catching a few Z's in more than one way today. Welcome to Planet Zito and the Zaniacs enjoying this one as Barry Zito is pitching a beauty. And Joe Zito, Barry's dad, has dropped by to visit. Uh, you must be, you're always proud of your son, I know. But, oh, yeah. Uh, sure. He's pitching a beauty today. And what yeah. does this mean to him, do you think, uh, going to Milwaukee as a first-time All-Star? I think he's thrilled, you know, of course. I mean, to, to be at this level and to be considered among, among the best, my gosh. <laughs> How about for you and your wife, Roberta? I mean, you guys, you knew this this young man had a special talent when he was yeah. just a baby and to put all the time in that you put in, and now he is among the very best pitchers in the world. And it has to be so satisfying for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, it is. There's no question. And, uh, you know, knowing him and uh, knowing where he is now in his mental preparation, I hope this doesn't come off wrong, but I think I, I think it's still the tip of the iceberg. I think we all agree. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. I, yeah, you talk about that, Joe, and I know in the past Barry has said that you and he have gotten together and yeah. talked out things. Now, a lot of times kids don't like to hear their fathers talk to them. How? What kind of special relationship do you have oh. that you can talk about these things and and he accepts it? When I speak to Barry, I tell him this is your father calling, or I say. This is your coach book, and I distinguish it from the two. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do that so that he knows he's going to hear something, and it's not about small talk. It's about strategy, or it's about this or that. And that's how I distinguish that. And uh, and sometimes in the middle of a conversation, I'll say, 
barbarian is your father talking. I've got to say something <laughs> to you. <laughs> I know that may sound strange to everybody. Well, we've all got fathers. They know exactly <laughs> what, what you're talking about. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, obviously, Barry's done the work, but I think your work, and in particular, when you guys got together last year in yeah. late July, and Barry was struggling last year, Joe. Yes, he, he was. He was not having a very good start to the year, and then the last couple of months, he was the best pitcher in baseball. And look at what he's done the first half of this year. He's a 10-game winner in the All-Star and on the brink of becoming an 11-game winner at the All-Star break. Mm -hmm. What did you tell him after his rough outing here against the Twins in late July? Oh, you mean last year? Yeah, last season. Uh, he called me and uh, asked me what was wrong. And I says, nothing's wrong. He says, what, what do you mean, Dad, nothing? He says, there's nothing wrong and there's nothing to worry about. I says, you forgot who you were. I says, um, you forgot what you are. You forgot where your strength is, where your power is. You started to allow the outside to become stronger than what's inside of you. And anybody that does that is going to have to suffer the consequence. And I says, we have to get back to who we are, where our strength comes from, that nothing is made from the outside in. Everything's made from the inside out. And I told him to look around the room and what do you see? And he looked at chairs and tables and I said, where do they come from? And uh, we traced them back that everything was at some point in someone's mind. They already had perceived that before it became a physical fact. I said, that also is the same with success and failure. I said, whoa. So Hada can't quite make that play, Joe. And Nafi Perez has a third hit against Barry today. That's remarkable. I want you to hear something. This is your son talking about what you have done for him and how, how you have helped him with his mental focus, his mental approach. Listen to this, Joe. And so it's all mental now. And my dad's not going to tell me, you know, finger pressure on my fastball because, you know, he's not a pitcher. So, But he, he tells me the mental stuff, and that's the biggest side of it, especially here in the big leagues because most guys here have about the same amount of talent. It's just what they do mentally with it. You know, and that's why some guys get stuck in A ball for 10 years and why other guys, you know, that you never thought could, could ever be a big league pitcher, you know, or in the, in the game. That's pretty good. Sounds like he, well, that's uh, surprising. he... Surprising to hear him say that? Yeah, I'd never heard him say any of these things. <laughs> that's why we played that. Just oh. to surprise you. <laughs> I, never, I never hear those things. This one is lifted off the bat of Berger towards left. Eric Berg's drifting back to the wall, and that one's gone. Just getting over the wall. Well, unfortunately, that uh, two-out infield single by Nafi Perez hurts Barry Zito here as he gives up the two-run homer to Brandon Berger. And that tightens this game up. The Royals now within three to two here in the top of the seventh. And just like that, another one-run game. <laughs> now we, we could obviously hear the anguish in your voice, uh, Joe. We'll take a look at the replay here on the yeah. home run. Fast, which was up. Yeah, fastball supposed to be inside. Yep. Did that not over the plate, and uh, ball carries so well in the daytime here at the Coliseum. Uh, Jay Hinch now pulls one foul. Are you are you living and dying on every pitch when you watch no. Barry throw? No, you're pretty calm. Uh, yeah, uh, what I concern about is his body language, which tells me his mental approach. And those are the things. I mean, you know, when uh, you know when you're trying to hit spots all the time, just like darts, they lie to go off a little here and there, you know. And that few inches, one way or the other, makes the difference. Tell you one thing about your son. When he does give up a home run, and we've seen it in the last few starts, he reacts and comes back even with more tenacity. Yes. It seems he's more focused after he gives up a home yes. run. Now watch how he reacts here after Berger takes him out, Joe. He's hot, but he's going to get back up on the mound and go mm -hmm. back to work. Yeah, that was a mistake pitch. Location was not there. And uh, to me, a major league his pitcher, a hitter, is supposed to, is supposed to hit that kind of pitch. Change up there, Ray, and he falls behind three and one. Well, the, mis uh -huh. the mistakes are going to get hit, and that's yep. that's why they are good hitters and why yep. pitchers, it's such a fine line. As uh, it should be. Yeah. DJ Hinch fouls it back. We are honoring one of the greatest of all time today, Joe. Very uh, 
long before Barry Zito, the great catfish hunter, was on this oh, mound. And he, he would give up home runs like that, Ray, and you caught him. You know it. It's what he did that right um, after the home run that really yeah. turned it around. We speak of that quite a bit. Um, the way we approach that is if we bring this one is backhanded by signs. Yeah. If we bring the past into the present, we not only lose the present, but we lose the future. Well, you didn't expect it to be easy, did you? The A's have uh, played at six consecutive one-run games, and uh, after the home run by Brandon Berger at the top of the inning, and it's down to a run. The A's lead at three to two. As we go to the bottom of the seventh, Dan Reichert will begin his first full inning of work. And uh, we all love Barry Zito and what he's been able to do this year. Ray Fossey and uh, myself, Greg Poppy, is truly with you. And Barry's dad, Joe Zito, dropped by for the top of the inning, and he's going to uh, stick around so much to uh, talk to you about and learn from you about. And off to Milwaukee, I guess, tonight. Yeah. Flying to Milwaukee uh -huh. tonight. Yeah. What's on the agenda for uh, tomorrow and Tuesday? We, we don't have a clue. I mean, when <laughs> we get there, we'll take it all in. somebody's going to probably hand us a piece of paper about what the activities are. And that's what we're going to do. Well, it will be a thrilling time. Oh, yeah. Have you because, been there? Well, because of all the festivities oh, now, yeah, you know, sure. that, that go on. Uh, starting actually they have a fan fest that's going on right yeah. now and then they'll have the, the home run hitting contest tomorrow yeah. and, and then of course the game but uh, and that's why I'm proud that Barry wanted to go and, and made such a oh a, sure. you know maybe the writers made too much of it kind of distracted him after yeah. our in the Seattle start because they talked so much about it but that was just Barry saying you know I'd love yeah. to go and, and there, yeah, that's true. There are some players, as the case with Pedro Martinez, who was selected and said, no, I want to I rest. He's been there a couple yeah. of times. <laughs> so. But really, I don't care how many times you've been there. It's yeah. an honor. Yeah, it is. And you put up the numbers, you should go and be able to represent your league Absolutely. and your team. Absolutely. So you and your wife, Roberta, are going, and a couple of and Barry's sisters will be at the game? Yeah, game. Sally's uh, sitting down there today, and then Bonnie Jean is flying up Tuesday, and then we'll all be leaving Wednesday to go back home. Yep. Now Barry's the youngest of all your children, yeah, right? He's the youngest. T. Long with a uh, swing and a miss. He strikes out. Joe, here in the bottom of the seventh. Joe, when, when when Barry was very young, and, and it's been well documented that uh, Randy Jones worked with him. You sure. you hired these. But what did you oh, see at the time that you wanted to make sure that these it, these special people were able to work with Barry? Well, um, we didn't we didn't have the money for him to go to college. I had withdrawn from everything to stay with Barry and get him grown up, raised, etc. My wife is an ordained minister, and ministers don't get paid too much money. You know. So I went out and sought um, someone that could make Barry a better pitcher in hopes that when he got into high school, someone might recruit him and, uh, you know, get him to college. Mm -hmm. Uh, without us having to pay any money. So that was the whole point of it. So we went to Randy when Barry was uh, 14. And our intention was to stay through 18. And we stayed through the year 17, and then we saw him on and off what went in his last senior year. So that was the whole point. And we figured the investment. I'm interrupting. No, okay. keep going. <laughs> um, is there a baseball game going on there, Joe? I'm not even. I'm listening. I'm listening. Oh, sorry. Uh, we figured we could we could squeeze out fifty dollars a week. So on a yearly basis, that was twenty five hundred dollars over four years. It would be ten thousand. So we squeezed out fifty dollars a week for lessons with Randy Jones. Hmm. And by the time he was a junior, they came knocking on the door for, to recruit him and. And then he had quite a few options in his senior year. So that plan worked. <laughs> yeah, obviously, yes. Got a chance to talk to Randy. This would have been last year. Or last year in San Diego. San Diego, yeah. right. And, uh, you know, he, he wanted to make sure that he was there to watch Barry pitch. Oh, you know, uh, yes. uh, and, of course, the only, the only difference that games today, Randy Jones used to pitch them and start the game. And it would still be daylight before the game. Oh, absolutely. When the game was over, about absolutely. an hour and a half, two hours. A little different in today's baseball. But, oh, uh, yeah. Randy's an excellent pitcher. Yeah. You know, uh, Barry used to go over to Randy, let's say, after a game and say, 
Randy, I struck out 10 or 12. Like, and Randy said, what the heck do you want to do that for? Get him out in three pitches. He said, what is it? Forget all those strikeouts. True. <laughs> He's True. smart. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> now, obviously, I think a lot of our viewers understand your, your background. They're going to make a pitching change here as uh, Tony Pena will come in. But hold on one more moment. Sure. I want to ask you a little about the great Nat King Cole and Frank sure. and all those people. And uh, just talk, maybe you talk Barry about stage presence a little bit on the big stage of the pitching now. Joe Zito, our guest here on Fox Sports Net. Best damn sports show, period. All-Star Summer rolls on tomorrow night. Crucky and Tom Arnold will invade the All-Star game. Maybe get a one-on-one -on -one with one Joe Zito. We've already beat him to it, though. So check us out tomorrow night, the best day in sports show, period, All-Star Summer, 8 o'clock tomorrow with no baseball, and then again at 10 o'clock. Greg Popper, Ray Fossey, and again, we're honored to be joined by Barry's dad, uh, Joe Zito. We've been talking mainly about Barry as a, as a pitcher, but uh, we know he's into music, and with your great background, uh, Joe, uh, he's got the guitar, he's on every trip playing the guitar with yeah. him sometimes on the airplane. Does he have any uh, talent in that regard, do you think? Uh, he's been around music, of course, because of myself and my wife, who a lot of people don't know about. She's quite a singer. I mean, she's an opera singer. And uh, really, really good. Yeah. Was a violinist, pianist. I mean, was playing things for those people who understand, playing the Mozart concertos at the age of 13. Mm -hmm. So she's very, mm -hmm. very talented musician herself and has near-perfect pitch. Um, and so he's been around music all of his life. He's heard it in the house and classical on down. And uh, so I, I think he's picked it up. He had the ability when he was much younger, he would just pick up trombone and play along with whatever was on the radio. Justice laces one to left and Beltran will run it down. You got to hang around three more. It's going to be a record. Oh. Three half innings, but it's Joe Zito's so interesting. <laughs> and Barry's going to pitch here, so we'll come back and talk to uh, Joe Zito more about his movie. For those that think young, the Barry Zito Pepsi line score. Barry leads it three to two, although Brandon Berger had a two run homer against him in the uh, top of the seventh. We'll see how Barry does here in the eighth against the top of the order. Carlos Fablis, Luis Alice, and then Carlos Beltran. Having a fascinating conversation as you watch uh, Barry pitch today with Barry's dad, Joe Zito, who is visiting up here in the booth. And you were telling us about uh, Barry musically and his mom, Roberta. You actually met. She was a backup singer in Nat King yes. Cole's uh, The Merry Young Souls, right? Yeah, she was. A, uh, Nat was uh, selecting. Well, actually, we all were selecting uh, 12 singer dances because Nat was going to go out with a show called Nat King Cole and The Merry Young Souls. And the Merry Young Souls consisted of 12, six boys, six girls, 12 singer dancers. And she was at Sam Goldwyn studio rehearsing when I uh, walked in. And uh, that was it, huh? Yeah, I mean, it was, <laughs> <laughs> I never even saw her. I, I saw, uh, she, you know, she, I just walked in and just looked over and. Well, I don't know what happened, but it happened. <laughs> Nat, I mean, Nat had a backup singer, and you had a <laughs> lifetime <laughs> companion. Huh? That yeah. was it. Yeah, and uh, Nat was, uh, he was supposed to be our, you know, Nat and Maria was supposed to be our best man and maid of honor at the wedding. And uh, so things got mixed up around then, and uh, that never happened, but we were very close. We were very good friends with Nat. Down is a ball to two strikes now. Uh, Luis had to say, and I speak for Ray in this, you know, your son. Uh, you guys obviously have done a great job bringing him up. He is such a delightful young man and has such a such an appreciation for so many different things. I mean, pitching when he's pitching, but he's yeah. well, he's he's into everything. This guy really is uh, eclectic, I think, is the word. People want to come up with a word for this guy, but yeah. he's eclectic. He's into a lot of things. Yeah, he's been uh, taught that there's no limit to the mind. And uh, well, he's just He's been taught those things in a certain way. Ellis bare hand going to make this play. The out recorded. He dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. The umpire never gave it out call. So Alessia is on base. The ball was dropped apparently at first by Omedo Signs. And Alessia is on. He was ready to make the out call. Umpire had his fist ready to go. Bill Miller check swing. Barry couldn't get to it. Great play. Great effort. And Omedo just uh, he had it. He just dropped it. 
Great play by Ellis, and he would have had him plenty of time, but for some reason Omedo not able to hang on. Omedo late to cover on one play. And now does not hold on to the feed from Ellis, so Beltron's the batter. Beltron, a very dangerous hitter. There's a strike. And as you sat down to visit with us today, uh, you were asking about Barry's pitch count. You uh, keep a close eye on that. Barry now at 104 in the uh, the afternoon. Beltron lifts this one. Chavez sees it. Tejada is there, though he sees it, and he's going to take charge. Two way. Yeah, the one thing that Barry started right from the first hitter, he has all, all three pitches working. Oh, he's had good. the fastball change and, and curveball all working today, and that might have been his last batter. Art Howe coming out with the dangerous Mike Sweeney coming up. Yep, that's it. Bradford will come in, so your son's going to be done. Is Barry going to pitch in the All Star game? I think he'll get one or one batter? Maybe I think he might get one or two outs. I mean, if he doesn't have a high pitch count. Oh, they don't want. They don't like this call, do they? <laughs> they want your boy to hang around, but Art's going to bring in Chad Bradford. Joe, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Congratulations so much. to you on having an All-Star Sonic every way. He's lead 3-2. Barry Zito's been on top of his game today with nine strikeouts. He's had them all working right from the very start. Eric Burns with a bomb of a home run. <laughs> and Edo Mato. They made it three nothing as they celebrated but Brandon Berger with a two run shot right back and we take a look at our Jack in the Box game summary Barry is lifted after 104 pitches 73 of those were strikes good enough to total nine strikeouts on the game. Eric Burns two RBIs a solo and a sack fly. So both Zitos have exited Joe from our booth and Barry from the game and now here's Chad Bradford. To work in the uh, top of the eight, dangerous matchup here against the Royals' lone All-Star, a three-time American League All-Star, first baseman Mike Sweeney. And to say the tying run with good speed on base. So he takes the first one low. Bradford entering the game here, but Art Howe. Looking down that lineup card, and there's uh, Jim Sear and Mike Venafro both throwing in the bullpen, a righty and a lefty. And after Sweeney, it is the right hander, Joe Randa, who was on deck. And then the left handed hitting, Raul Ibanez. All right, Al talked about wanting to get Ted Lilly an inning today. It was difficult with uh, Barry going seven and two thirds. Yeah, Lily would like to get a little work. He's not pitched, he said, in eight days. He was supposed to start for the Yankees today as they scratched Roger Clemens from the start. Lily was going to go today against the Blue Jays at Yankee Stadium, but it was the new Yankee Jeff Weaver who made the start and won the game. There is Lily who met his new teammates this morning. I don't know that a one run game would be ideal. Put a pitcher in who's not thrown that uh, length of time. And he has made 11 starts for the Yankees this year and five out of the bullpen in a total of 16 appearances. One, one pitch. This one he hits a foul. And with Ted Lilly joining the uh, A's, Billy Koch hanging out in the bullpen with him. The A's now have three left handed starters. Mark Mulder, Barry Zito today, the All Star, and Lily. He's not had three lefty starters since mid 80s. There's a swing and a miss. Bradford strikes out Mike Sweeney. A huge out here to get the A's out of the eighth with Zito in the lead intact at three to two. Carl's Jr. in your face play today as they decided the all star field to it. Barry Zito, big curveball to Brandon Berger. Check out Tejada. This will save a run. Flipping to second base to nail Nafi Perez. Mike Sweeney Ray was on second. He was coming around. He would have scored had Tejada not made that play. 
Uh, Tejada very good at uh, diving, getting his uniform dirty, and especially with a runner in scoring position. A tremendous play. Well, we're in the bottom of the eighth now. The A's clicking to a one run lead. What's new? Eric Chavez brought in the game's first run when he tripled to right field with two outs. Then uh, came around to score in a base hit by John Mabry. Well, Eric one for three today. You would think with the A's involved in all these one run games. Chavez grounds one to Nathan Perez at short and he'll throw him out for the first out that the A's closer Billy Cox would be ringing up save after save after save. But it's not the case because the A's have been coming from behind to win by a run during this stretch. Oh, Mr. Cox is up. Billy Cox will prepare to pitch the ninth inning and it will be a save opportunity. He's not had a save chance since June the 21st. Two weeks and two days ago Ray. So when the A's scored three more runs. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a possibility. Art would take it. <laughs> Said he's preparing to pitch the night. Yes. It may not turn out that way. We'll see. Either way, he's pitching. John Mabry. Either way, he's hit. Guy is incredible. Up the middle again. His third hit of the game. Four hit games, three hit games. They are the norm from John Mabry. The other night, what a moment. He's had some big moments, but the biggest moment of the season for Mabry here against Roberto Hernandez on Friday night. Check out the security guard. Ball hit the uh, chair and dive from first all the way in to beat the Royals and Roberto in the bottom of the night. That was maybe the most bizarre of this week, of the theater of the bizarre. So Mabry on base. The Royals go back to the bullpen as Mullen Yields. They bring in Grimsley. 3 2 A still batting here, bottom at eight. Have you heard about the Subway ticket offer? They have a great offer to get you in to watch the A's play this year. You can slide into any participating Subway restaurant and purchase a Subway fresh value meal, and you'll get a coupon for $2 off your next A's ticket. So the offer is good while supplies last at participating Subways. This is Jason Grimsley. They will make the appearance here in the bottom of the eighth. They'll face Olmedo Signs. Scott Hatterberg has been bothered by an elbow problem, as you know, inflamed uh, elbow, the right elbow. And he's been out of the lineup for a couple of days. He had saw him at the clubhouse before the game. He is feeling much, much better. He hasn't swung a bat, done anything in a couple of days, but the plan is uh, for Scott to. Take the day off if they can do it. It looks like they will hear Ray and let him get essentially a week off before he goes back to work uh, Thursday at Camden Yards. So he's not going to bat for Omedo. Omedo will stay in the game. To face the hard throwing righty, Jason Grimsley. Grimsley worked yesterday in inning. And one, two, three, and it wasn't that with a strikeout, just nine pitches. He also worked on the 4th of July. Giving up a couple of hits. Hard throwing right hander. Very good to heavy sinker along with a good slider. and it sinks it's a tough pitch to hit. Romano doubled his last time up and that set it up for Eric Burns to bring in a run of the sack fly. Mabry like he is right now was at first base and signs after being nearly hit by a pitch doubled high off the wall to the left center. One pitch. Romano lifts this one to the right Brandon Berger. Coming over. He was under it. He'll make the catch with a reach. And signs retired two way. 
So far, the miscue in right field is the difference in this game. One run difference and uh, Billy Cox will be coming on to try to preserve it. Unless Eric Burns can give him some insurance, it'll be a one run lead again. Burns in the fifth inning. Off board. Fastball down and <laughs> new handshake. They've got several of them. Yeah. Eric Burns, his second homer of the year, his fifth major league home run. He has impressive power, though. When he hits them, they go a long, long way. When the A's were at PNC Park, he was hitting ball after ball. Deep over the wall in left field for home runs. Very impressive. Tough park to homer. And you see the home run Daryl Ward hit last night? Into the river. Well, again here. Yeah. That is a shot. First one to uh, Berkman bounced. Uh, was it Berkman bounced one in this the day before. Yep, that's Berkman. Well, he's on a home run bench. Ward's uh, splashed down several feet behind the concrete wall alongside the Allegheny and into the river. They say he went 479 feet. Had one boat chasing it. He dove in and got it. One ball and one strike to Burns. Looking ahead to the ninth inning for the Royals. Mike Sweeney made the last out of the eighth inning. Chad Bradford struck him out a huge out. So Joe Randa will lead off, followed by Raul Ibanez and then Nafi Perez. Michael Tucker had a bat too down in the, uh, in the runway. He was the one that hit the home run single. 405 foot single off the couch yesterday. Fred White, who's doing some radio in the Royals this week, said, on so bad, can't even score a run on a home run. <laughs> they did score a run, but uh, it was only one. It was a bizarre play as Mike Caruso was the runner, and uh, he had to make sure the ball was going to be over the wall, and the batter's just ripping around the bases. Russo going back past the batter, Tucker. Tucker got Homer taken away. Is he asking if that last pitch was a strike? And it was a nasty pitch regardless. Down and away, good sinking action. Almost a two strike swing by, uh, by Burnsy. Jason Grimsley, 2 2 pitch. Eric Burns takes all three. Waiting on deck is Ramon Hernandez. Ramon has walked twice today in three plate appearances. John Mabry, the runner at first base, will be off on the pitch. Holding him on. And he goes Mabry and Burns follows him. The A's win this game. Barry Zito will be an 11 game winner at the All Star break. The A's have not had a pitcher with 11 at the break since the 90 year. Bob Welch had 13. Dave Stewart had 11. 120 with Welchi winning the Saw Young with 27. Mabry running again. Burns is swinging a miss. And that'll be the inning. The A's don't score in the eighth. Billy Koch is summoned for the ninth. Randa, Ibanez, Sweeney, and maybe Michael Tucker in a one run lead. Another one run game. Why, of course, at our Mercedes Benz line score. The A's got a run in the fourth. And uh, then later, Eric Burns homered and had a sack fly to make it 3 0. But Brandon Berger. With a two run homer tightens it up and that means Billy Koch will be in in search of that elusive 20th save he picked up save number 19 on June the 21st in Cincinnati and that ended an incredible period for Billy Ray where he saved five consecutive A's games one at Peckville Park three in Pittsburgh and then one in Cincinnati 
that he's been stuck on 19. He's not had a safe chance since that hot night in Cincinnati two weeks and two days ago. And here he is trying to get Barry Zito win number 11. Joe Randa will be first. Then Ra Raul Ibanez. And we may see Michael Tucker bad for Perez. We'll see. Although Perez has had a decent game today. Even though Billy Koch has not had a save opportunity, doesn't mean he's not been used. In fact, he's been used a lot. Yesterday, he threw 48 pitches out of the bullpen, a season high as he went two, two innings. Two innings, yes. Randa straight back, foul, one ball, one strike. And with that in mind, Mike McNaughty is throwing the bullpen. Of course, he has not worked forever. And Ted Lilly is throwing. He's not worked forever also, <laughs> even though forever was a Yankee. Not to the 24th of June. It's almost two weeks. Yeah. Joe Randa, 0 for 3 today, all against Barry Zito. Couple of fly balls and a ground out to second. Hits one back into the crowd. Maybe, or pardon me, Signs will chase, but he won't get there. Big crowd today. Well over uh, 30,000 for the Catfish Hunter Bobblehead Dog giveaway. 31,000. 676. <laughs> Do that. What he said. Got ball to Tejada. Plants. Fires low. Scoop and out recorded. Nicely done by Omeda. He dropped one earlier. For this one, he scoops to get Randa. One away. And Tejada a couple of times pointing over to. Uh, Omedo sign saying thank you. And to beat it into the ground to Hada backhand plenty of time but as he threw he threw it straight down and the scoop by Omedo on the other end. Big scoop there. Backhand scoop. Yep. Just see the release point. Snow cone. The fan was telling our trumpeter play something we know. <laughs> He's some of that vintage stuff that I don't think the fans Go back that far. What does he want? Uh, Metallica or something for <laughs> Billy Koch here? Well, he's not taking requests. Raul Abanez calls one. Nafi Perez has moved into the on deck circle. These are a couple outs away from win number 50. Perez has had a good game, a three hit game. Well, Michael Tucker had a home run against uh, Koch yesterday. Abandi has got jammed, fouls this one back. Yeah, closers like to work, well, put it this way, when they work. And in the case of Billy Koch, throwing a lot of pitches yesterday, probably feels like that he's better today. And we kind of loosen him a little bit. And especially this being a situation where he is trying to save a game. One two pitch blew him away. He ate up Raul. Two away in the night. Billy Koch one more out and it will be against Nafi Perez. Barry Zito will have 11 wins and the A's will have 50 on the year. That high fastball that at 98. Looks so good but so tough to hit. Koch would also have 20 saves. So nice round numbers. He'd have 40 percent of the A's first half total 20 out of the 50. Nafi Perez slaps one foul for a strike. Nafi really struggling but. A couple of infield singles. And a three hit game against Zito gets him a fourth at bat here against Koch. Eric Burns a couple of ribbies a big home run and later a sack fly and Nafi Perez able to check it in time if Perez does get on base we are going to have a rematch of Tucker and Koch Tucker hit one over the wall yesterday longest single in Major League history but it was a big one Perez trying to wait Koch out here but he snaps at the throwback from Ramon two and one.
missed. Tried a high one. Perez lays off. Ramon Hernandez, before he gave the sign, the last sign, he just kind of took a deep breath, wanting his pitcher to relax. Take it easy, just not try to force it. And Perez loops one to left. Fittingly, it will be Eric Burns who will get Barry Zito his 11th victory. They are the best of friends. Barry goes to Milwaukee with the most wins an ace pitcher has had at the break since Welch and Stu in 1990. Art Howe has his 50th win of the year. Billy Koch has the belated 20th save. Seattle Mariners are winning by a score of four to two over Minnesota in the seventh and the Angels will throw Ramon Ortiz tonight against Tanny and Sturts and Tampa Bay will come back at you lined up for the break. The A's have 50 wins at midyear three two over the Royals. Baseball is brought to you by McDonald's. There's something new at McDonald's hot and spicy chicken fingers now on our everyday McValues menu by Pepsi the joy of Pepsi by Volvo. Volvo for life by AT&T Broadband, cable television, internet, and local phone service. For more information, call 1-800-945-2288. And by Taco Bell. For a tasty deal, think outside the bun. 31,676 were here to catch a few Z's and see Barry become an 11-game winner and end a wild week. For the A's, Foss. All seven played this week, one run games. That is an Oakland A's record for most consecutive one run victories, but the A's win four out of the seven. Well, three very exciting coming from behind, but uh, today a little bit nicer. A one, two, three, ninth inning for Billy Koch and hit that elusive number 20. And I, very important, I think, for the Athletics because, again, now 12 games over 500 as they entered the All Star break last year, right at the 500 mark. And uh, just a, a great way to finish the first half and get ready for a second half and hope they can come. A little bit close to what they did last year in the second half of the season. You know, several weeks ago, Art Hop pulled out a schedule and looked at his uh, one loss record and said, if we can get 50 wins by the All Star break, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. And the A's have got their 50. They're the third team in the West to get uh, to 50 by the break. So the second half is going to be a challenge. They're all playing well, the Mariners and the Angels. On Catfish, Hunter Bobblehead Day, Barry Zito throws like the gentleman pitcher. Stick around. Blowtorch TV comes your way next. Join us on Saturday at 4 when the A's take on the Orioles game 2 of 4. That'll be Zito's next to start. His first one after his All-Star game appearance. Uh, good luck to Barry and to Miguel Tejada in the All-Star game. In-game stats brought to you by Scorepad. For Ray Fossey and our entire Fox Sports Net crew, I'm Greg Papa. Have a great break, everybody.